Hey guys, so this is the last challenge of the day, day 17, and we are caught up, and I want to talk about warm-up and choreography, and I've been doing um, dancing for so long, I really never sat down and thought about the importance of warm-up and what it means to, you know, as a praise dance leader, to warm up the body and, you know, the technical definition behind it and, you know, how it's really helpful for the body. So I just want to um, remind praise dance leaders when they are you know, doing choreography that they must warm up their dances and they have to warm up as well. So it's very, very important. So one of the things, um, well, war what is warm up? Um, a lot of people, we say the word all the time, we hear, oh, warm up at a dance class, stretch before you exercise, warm up, warm up, warm up. Well, technically, warm up is basically a combination of rhythmic exercises that one, raises the heartbeat, the muscle temperature, um, and it's a static stretching through a full range of motion. So basically it's about rhythm, raising the heartbeat, and it's about stretching the body and the muscles and things like that. Just going to prepare you, you know, to dance. So the purpose of warm up, is very simple. It improves the physical ability and accelerates the recovery process after you practice. Um, it prepares dancers for the physical exertion when they begin to dance. And two, I mean three, it builds the intensity so dancers can engage in cardiovascular activity so basically you warm up is just like a pre-dance you know you're warming up the bodies you're warming up the limbs you know and you're preparing them you know to engage in dancing to rehearse um, warm-up helps up with a lot of stuff one like I said it raised the body temperature um, by two degrees and I didn't know that so I was like oh wow that's cool number two it increases the heart rate number three it creates the blood flow to the muscles number four you know it mobilizes the joints number five it prepares the dancers mentally and and physically you know to begin the choreography that you created for them so warm-up is very very important and warm-up includes a couple of things so when you want to do warm up you want to do maybe 10 to 15 minutes I say 20 um, just simple rhythmic movements that raise the body temperature increase the heart rate and the blood flow um, so you want to do you know a lot of head rolls a lot of shoulder rolls arm circles um, you want to do the washboards going up and down stretching up to the sky, touching your toes, you want to do that. Remember, you want to mobilize certain body joints, you know, just to get them moving. Um, knee bends, you want to do a lot of um, maybe running in place, you know, to get the knees warmed up and everything else. And what people don't realize, you got to warm up the feet. So do a lot of flexing and pointing with the feet. You want to roll your ankles and things like that. I'm doing it with my hands because I can't put my feet in the cameras. But what you want to do is with your feet, you want to flex and you want to point the feet. You want to get the feet and you, um, the foot and the ankles and the toes moving and you want to start rotating your feet as well so you can rotate your feet you know in a circle motion on the outside and then on the inside and a lot of people don't really pay attention to the feet but that's important to dancers because that's what you're dancing on you need your feet to dance so again you want to mobilize certain you know parts of the bodies just to get the warm up number two um, warm up you know it increases the range of motion um, like I said, you want to stretch certain muscles like the arms and the legs and the thighs and the calves. The calves are very important because a lot of times um, dancers can get cramps within their calves while they're dancing and jumping and running and stuff like that. So make sure that you stretch the calves and stretch your back as well. Um, so you want to stretch out those major areas. Um, hold each position for 10 seconds and then breathe. When you're stretching, you never want to bounce. Now I remember taking dance classes. Um, it would seem like we were stretching forever, but it was only like maybe 10 to 15 seconds and they will always say breathe the reason why you need to breathe into your stretch is because you're stretching the muscles you don't want to bounce because you can hurt yourself and you can injure yourself you always want to you know stretch those muscles um, another thing that includes warm-up is you know you want to stretch the major muscle areas two to three times on both sides so you want to stretch it on the left side and the right side what you want to do is create a balance so again if you're stretching the arms I'm not giving an example if you're taking your arm and doing it like this do it two to three times like maybe 10 to 20 counts you want to do the opposite as well and you want to stretch your arm okay and again you're just stretching the back of your arms 
and you're also stretching the back muscles as well so it's very important that you make sure that everybody is warmed up and you're doing both sides of the body just don't do the right side and say okay let's dance because you're going to mess up the left side of the body and you're going to cause the dancers you know um some pain and some discomfort so make sure that you're doing both sides of the body when you are warming up and the purpose of the stretches is to increase range of motion so though the body is stiff and it comes in cold but once you start doing like shoulder movements and things like that you're warming up the body and then you know you start off with the shoulder circular motions but then it grows into you know big arm movements and then you can start moving side to side so it's important that you warm up those major areas then once you do that um purpose of stretching you can begin to you know prepare the body for technique and then choreography so that is the purpose of you know stretching the body and getting warmed up um, another is you can start practicing specific skills prepare for dancers so if there's high kicks that you want them to do or if there's turns that you want them to do you can start practicing that within your warm-up again it's very important when you are warming up the dancers don't allow them to bounce because they can hurt themselves and they can pull something. Always remind them to breathe while they are doing the warm up. Very important. And there's a lot of benefits to warm them. Um, I remember, you know, when you're younger, when you're about like maybe 10 and 12, you're like, oh my God, this is so boring. But, you know, as you get older, your body thanks you for the warm up because you need that time, you know, to increase your heart rate and to get things moving and things like that. So you appreciate the warm up when you get older. But when you're a kid, you know, it's kind of boring. You know, you just want to jump into it but I'm going to tell you the benefits of a warm-up so it prepares the body for complex movements so depending on what level you're on if you're doing a lot of high jumps and a lot of high kicks or if you're carrying people and you know you're doing extensions and stuff like that it's very important for you to do warm-up um, it helps the muscles to contract and to release so that's very important especially if you're doing extensions and you're holding your leg up in the air and like I said if you're doing hold the positions or if you're holding other people it's very important you know to get those muscles warmed up and moving it reduces soreness the more you warm up and take your time you're not gonna come out of dance rehearsals like you got beaten up within a boxing ring or you just came off a football field it reduces soreness on um, number four it prepares the mind the mind and the body to dance so instead of just getting in there and doing choreography what the warm-up does is prepare you so you know you're doing the exercises that leads to the choreography that you're going to create and number five which is very important it decreases the risk of injury so you're not worried about a dancer coming out of there limping or you know they're coming to the rehearsal with the ace bandage around their knee or their ankle because you didn't take the time to warm up so it's very important that you warm up because you don't want dancers to come into the next rehearsal injured um don't forget to do the cool down so another important factor that you want to do after your choreography you got to cool them down um, after practice it's important to give the body time to recover you know you've danced for like maybe an hour or maybe 45 minutes to an hour or an hour and a half what you want to do is um, give the body time to cool to cool down you stress the body you've done a lot of movements a lot of jumping a lot of running around the sanctuary or whatever your dance rehearsal you increase the um, heart rate you increase your blood pressure now what you want to do is just cool the body down and I'll give you five reasons why that's important um, after practice you got to give your time give your body time to just breathe and recover um, the body needs time to pump the blood into the muscles around the heart and the brain so you won't get dizzy. Warm, cool down prevents dizziness. Um, a lot of times, if um, I'll give you an example, if you're working out in the gym, if you're on the treadmill, whatever, you notice that people just don't stop the treadmill and jump off. They'll slow down their pace and then they'll begin to breathe. What you want to do is give your body time to get in the oxygen and just relax. So again, if you're constantly, as a praise dance leader, you have the dancers dancing, and you know you finish the rehearsal like okay you can go that's very dangerous because soon you'll notice that they're falling out like flies what you want to do you want to give them time to cool down you don't want the babies you know to fall out and just you know faint and you wonder what happened you gotta make them cool down after the practice so again um, cool down is important because it prevents dizziness um, number three the body needs time to release the adrenaline and the endorphins within the circular system so again this presents um, prevents restlessness and sleepless nights so I don't know if dancers will notice um, 
you know, after rehearsal, you know, you're amped and everything else. And then you go home and you can't wind down. You can't sleep. You know, you're just so energized. and You're wondering what's going on. You try to lay down and you find yourself, you know, watching TV to, you know, just to wind down and stuff like that. That's because you didn't do the cool down. Okay, so you got to, you know, calm your body down and do certain exercises, you know, to cool the body down and just relax so you won't go home all amped up like you drunk like 15 pots of coffee like I said you want to do the cool down so you can relax um, it prevents stiffness and soreness it's very important that you stretch out the body after every dance practice it doesn't take long do 10 to 15 minutes of a cool down like I said you want to do this to decrease injuries and to you know just not wake up the next morning all sore and walking into work the next day with a cane or going to school because you know you've been hurt you got to do cool downs it's very important and number five last one it promotes relaxation it just relaxes the body and it makes you feel really good after you had a good praise dance workout you know and choreography and stuff like that so those are the important reasons that you should do a warm-up and have a cool down after the praise dance rehearsal so again if you're dancing in the um, rehearsal for 45 minutes to an hour or an hour and a half praise dance leaders please remember to have a cool down it doesn't take long do 10 to 15 minutes max like I said you want to do this so you don't injure your dancers um, tips on choreography. I've talked about choreography before and you can go to my YouTube videos and you could put in um, choreography. Tips on choreography. I talk about the types of sources and everything else. But I'm going to give you four tips. But again, if you want details, you can go to my YouTube videos and again, just review um, on Sundays. I believe it's in blue or in purple, but I give tips on how to choreograph. But this is just a quick recap. So one, one you want to find inspiration. Um, get a source. That source can be a picture. It could be music. It could be sounds of nature. It could be clips of a sermon. It could be poetry. It could be a movie clip. It could be a person whoever inspires you to choreograph use that source um, number two have your music ready please 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 stop coming to rehearsal at the last minute flipping through your iPod trying to figure out what you're going to dance to as a praise dance leader that is incorrect you are not in order and you're wasting a lot of time and you're making the dancers really bored and that's a downward spiral for them leaving don't give them the excuse to leave have your stuff ready get your house in order have your music prepared have your vision prepared um, um, what I mean by vision, have your concept already ready of what you want to do. Um, choreograph ahead of time. Practice your movements at home. Trust me, I keep saying this, your dance rehearsal will flow so much easier. Have your movements ready um, in your head. If you don't have the choreography, then have an idea. Um, number three, get your message across. Teach your dancers the steps in a way that they can pick it up. Just don't yell at them, you know, um, pure wet jump roll and do a backflip and then you know do a split in the air you have to show them now if they are advanced professional dancers and they know the terminology then that's fine that you can do that but if they're not trained dancers and they're beginning and intermediate then you're going to have to stop being lazy get off your behind and then show them the steps or have your assistant show them the steps whatever however you're teaching the dance and make sure that they have something to watch and then they know how to execute the dance the way that you want them to so get your message across teach the steps if you're not going to teach it because due to an injury or whatever they have your assistant do it but it's very important that you show your dancers how you want your vision done very important so get your message across number four be yourself um, it's okay to have your own signature movement, your own signature style. And I talk about this a lot in my choreography videos. Please go back and review Choreography Sundays. Um, I break down tips on choreography and there's enough um, material in there to learn how to do choreography. Um, like I said, it's okay to look at other praise dance videos, look at other choreographers and their style of movements and get ideas and even add it to your own. If you want to steal some of the moves, then that's fine, but don't be a copycat. Put your own personality to it. You know, you are creative. God created you to be a very creative person. You have your own personality, your own style, how you look at things, you know, your perspective and stuff. So be yourself. Don't be like the next praise dance ministry who has a lot of followers, who has a lot of numbers, who's known within the ministry. You don't know their story. You don't know how they got there. Do not be like them. Be yourself. There's enough. The world is big enough for everybody, you know. Praise dance leaders need to be unique. That is very important. I don't know who I'm talking to in this video. Please stop copying, you know, these 
really big popular people they have their own plate they have their own role that they have to do now it's time for you to step into your purpose and your destiny and be the person god has chosen you to be stop trying to be like the person next door or stop trying to be like the icon that you're always seeing on the internet with a lot of followers like i said you don't know what that person went through to get to where they are you don't know their story or their ministry it's very important for praise dance leaders to stop getting so caught up and involved into the hype it's time for you to get involved in your own journey in your own story so again please be confident in what you have with your style and your skill set and your craft you have to practice that if you wanted to get to an uh a level of excellence so again i don't know why i went that way on who i'm talking to in this video but it's important to start using your own choreography your style and your technique like i said it's okay to get help um to look at praise dance videos and you know look at movements and everything else but use your own style be your own person and that's just my little soapbox so the challenge of the day is it's a quick one and it's fun um, one find a source of inspiration and i spoke about the type of sources that you need um two choose a favorite praise dance song three set up your camera and what you want to do is just tape yourself you want to do 32 counts of freestyling don't do any choreography um, just worship and just dance and like I said you're gonna do just 32 counts but if you feel led to just you know dance and just go with the flow then you could do that as well so again you're gonna choose your favorite praise dance song you're gonna tape yourself and then you're just gonna freestyle no choreography don't create any type of movement um, number five what you want to do once you finish sit down and then look at your movement number six you're gonna pick out the movements that you like um, whatever you like perfect it craft it and if you need help or if it needs tweaking then you can go and you can look at other um, praise dance videos or praise dance choreographies and you can add on to it like I said add to it don't change it or throw it away because they do it better that's not the point of what you're doing what you're doing is if you're researching to add on and to enhance what you have do not throw what you have away you just want to enhance it and make it better and make it different um the point of this is i want you to start creating your own style and be confident in your own signature move um once you do that last one practice 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 and then once you begin to practice 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 you know you begin to be confident in your own signature move in your own style so though that is the challenge of the day and those are the seven things that i need you to do and i know it's a lot but um as praise dance choreographers i need to um push you as leaders to be comfortable within your own choreography so i'll name them again find a source of inspiration choose a favorite praise dance song set up your camera so you can tape yourself once you tape yourself do 32 counts if you feel led to dance to the whole song then do that just dance you're freestyling no choreography no movement don't think about it just move once you do that you're going to sit back and you're going to look at your movement you're going to look at the stuff and you're going to pick out certain moves that you like what a move that you like you're going to practice that you have the choice if you want to if you want to look at other praise dance choreography and things like that to enhance what you have do not throw away what you already did on tape that's not the point of you taping yourself the reason why you taped yourself is because you want to get a picture and you want to be comfortable on how you look on tape and be comfortable within your movement um the point of the research is you know just to get tips and ideas to enhance your creativity you know to add on to it and there's nothing wrong with that it's still your choreography you still created it it's still you you're just getting you know tips and ideas and you're researching and once you do that um practice 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 and those are the seven tips thank you so much guys please subscribe to this channel comment in the box i thank those who are supporting me who are emailing me let me know that i'm doing a great job i really thank you for your support like i said i'm here to minister to your needs and to encourage praise dance leaders don't quit you were chosen for a reason uh, you have a purpose and you have a destiny you have a ministry that you are responsible for so it's not about you you are ministering to your praise dancers you are investing in them and you are helping them to grow and in the meantime um, I want to help you with any challenges that you have that's why God gave me this challenge for 30 days to help praise dance leaders you know to stay in their positions and you know just to help them out with things that they are being challenged with okay guys thank you so much subscribe to the channel and I will see you day 19 take care and be blessed